You finally found members for your party. You've got characters created. And now all you need to do is start writing down details for that first campaign. But where do you start? Somewhere where there's people is usually the best place to start. And today we're going to talk about different kinds of human settlements. Now, of course, in a game like D&D, there's going to be many more settlements than just plain old human. Your elf, your dwarf, your half-orc or full-orc or whatever. We're going to start talking about human settlements because they're kind of the default. And really, you can break them into three different kinds. First, you've got a village. Then you move up to town. And finally, to city. Villages are a popular starting choice for D&D adventures because they're the smallest of the settlements. You don't have to build too much into your world. You can just have a small place where it's mostly farming villages or perhaps you're a mining villages. A village technically doesn't even have to be in one place. You could have a nomadic village where people get up and they move around the countryside based on the season in order to get better hunting or perhaps to avoid the cold or the heat. Villages usually have up to about a thousand people. In terms of what governments, there could be some noble if you're in a very large country or empire, or it could be a village ruled by some sort of small democratic process. It could be that there's a bunch of village elders. It could be that once a year or once a season, everybody gets together to vote on things. Or it could be that there just really isn't much of one at all. Defense-wise, there's often not much of a force around, if a force at all. If you're pushing the thousand people mark, you might have a small garrison of two or three soldiers at most. And this is probably if your village is near something that's valuable, like a mine. Instead, what would usually happen is some kind of militia. People over a certain age, usually somewhere in the 16 to maybe about 50 age range, will get together and parole the village itself or quote unquote be on alert, be on call if you will. They'll have to band together, they'll have to bring their own weapons and defeat whatever forces that is. It could be zombie invasion, it could be goblins. It could just be the annoying neighbors in the next town over. These people in a village generally will have to fend for themselves. They're mostly self-sustaining. Usually they produce enough food in order to provide for themselves and their family and have a bit of a surplus that they will take on to a larger town or perhaps even a city. In terms of other organizations, a village might have a temple or place of religious worship, but they're really not going to have many other organized facilities. Maybe if you're on the sea, you might have an official fishing shack or somewhere to process your gotten gains. But usually that's going to be the majority of the organized groups in the area. In terms of the buildings you might see, villages generally won't have too many. First of all, they generally won't have any sort of defensive fortifications. However, you might have sort of a village square where people live and their families stay in a close area, or it could be much more spread out. People in these kind of places will generally have their own farming area, and they might live in a house out on the farm. A central area will probably have that religious building and probably some sort of inn slash tavern and maybe a government building, which would often consist of shared storage of grain, where in case of famine, grain can be doled out to villagers as needed. The next size up is a town. Towns usually have between one and 6,000 people, and they're a lot larger than your typical village. However, they generally don't take up as much area. A town will generally have several villages in its immediate area. Think of a modern day city and its suburbs. Those villages will provide most of the sustenance that these towns need. Usually, these are gonna be ruled by some kind of a noble or a mayor. In most fantasy settings, this is going to be appointed either by hereditary or someone in a city who is point, appointing these smaller town mayors. Towns themselves are often major trade centers. These could be on a trade route between one empire and the next. It could be on an island that's on an often used path or perhaps along a major river. Towns are where you start to see a larger semblance of government. You'll often have a constabulary here, a small force. It could be just ruffians 
who go around beating up anyone who annoys the local mayor. It could be official military people in full regalia. They might have a small garrison to protect trade goods and make sure everything flows well. And the city itself could have walls. A town will often have a palisade, even if it doesn't have enough to have a fortified stone wall. Earthen walls are also pretty popular for this size of settlement. Here, you're going to start seeing a larger diversity of people too. Within the human realm, you'll see more of different types of people. In a fantasy setting-wise, you'll start to see the odd race pop up. Maybe there's a dwarf who came here to start a brewery. Perhaps elves are here for trading of leather goods. As opposed to the lone country inn, a town will probably have several. You might have a very low rough class one for travelers passing through or for your local hands or slaves, whereas you might have a nicer one for when government officials pass by. You're also going to start seeing various organizations in addition to religion. You may see some sort of thieves guild, groups of fighters might be present due to constant need to guard caravans or act as bodyguards for people, especially as they venture out into the further wilds. And you're going to start to see other organizations in terms of blacksmithing, stoneworking, carpenters. All of these things can be provided in a town, although they might not be of the best quality. People who excel in their skills will generally go on to a city. And that's what we're talking about next. Cities in a fantasy campaign will often have populations up to about 25,000 people. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule. You certainly could have more, and there were ancient cities in our world which had more. However, those would usually fall under a capital city or some kind of megapolis, which we'll get into in another video. But for an average city, there's definitely going to be some kind of a noble or military leader that presides over the area. There will be several lower ranked nobles or government officials who will help the noble in these areas in order to provide the function of governance. For example, there will probably be someone who's in charge of policing, a sheriff, if you will. You'll have someone in charge of alcohol, someone in charge of agriculture, and many other things in those regards. In terms of a defense, cities will generally not have something as small as a palisade or even an earthen wall. By the time you hit city status, the city is wealthy enough or can conscript enough people in order to make a stone wall. This isn't necessarily the case though. Some cities may not have a wall. If they're in an area that's fairly peaceful or perhaps they're in a strategically advantage place. So for example, if they're on some kind of an island that generally has cliffs, so there's not really a lot of places for an invading force to land, they might forego the walls in order to maximize the area that they do have. Cities themselves will often have some kind of official police force, a constabulary, town wardens, whatever you'd like to call them who are directly employed by whatever the head noble is. That being said, most of the nobles who live there, the families will have their own military. It was custom back in the old days that each noble would provide parts of their own personal military when the nation would go to war. If you're doing a city-state campaign, this is going to be doubly true. In a city, you're going to be a major trade stop larger than the towns. You are an end place where goods will travel in order to be finished. You'll have some of the finest artisans in the land. You will have people who can make exquisite levels of metalwork, leather, woodcraft, and you'll start to get a lot more of arts and entertainment. While a town may have a minstrel or two and that might often pass through there, the village will Maybe if they're lucky, once a season, get a minstrel troupe pass through. A city will have multiple venues. They'll often have people doing plays, playing music, doing small magic tricks in various towns, but they'll also have theaters, places specifically designed in order for entertainment. Cities are also places of learning, both for intellectual and religious pursuit. You'll often have universities, monasteries, high-level religious officials in temples that people will make pilgrimages to. And with those, you'll often find a library. A library can be a great place for your characters to research all sorts of things from history, spellcraft, whatever it is they might need to really kick that campaign into high gear. In a city, you're also going to have 
more stark areas between rich and poor. A city will generally have slums, people who live a more middle class lifestyle, and you will have a wealthy slash noble area. These areas may or may not be divided by job as well. For example, a mercantile class will often stick together and they'll have lots of extra coin to spend. Military will often stick together and religious people will live in a religious zone. In addition, you are definitely gonna have crime. Lots and lots of thieves. There will be various thieve guilds. Some might be part of international mafia type organizations. Others will be local thugs and you are probably gonna have some sort of beggar's guild. It's amazing how organized those guys are. A city itself will generally be located in some area that is a very fertile area. So perhaps a delta plain where a river washes down fresh soil from the mountains every year. It might also be along a river or perhaps on an island that is large enough to sustain quite a sizable population. From village to town to city, each type of settlement has its own pluses and minuses and has its own potential for a great beginning area for a campaign. So which do you prefer? Leave a comment down below. If you could, subscribe to the channel, click like, and I will be back next week with another video.